Welcome to another Yukon Q Center video. This video is all about the limit comparison test for proving convergence or divergence of infinite series. In this video, I'm going to show you what the limit comparison test is, I'm going to prove why it works, and I'm going to show you two examples of applying the limit comparison test to proving the convergence or divergence of a particular series. Here's what the limit comparison test says. First off, what you need are two series, an and bn, where all of the terms in both of the series are positive. If you then took this limit right here, and it equaled c, where c is some positive number between 0 and infinity, what that means is the series an and the series bn either both converge or they both diverge. Now this part right here should make sense intuitively because if all of the terms in an are positive and all of the terms in bn are positive, then a positive number divided by a positive number should yield a positive number. However, this part down here, where it says this means they either both converge or diverge, might come off as complete randomness. So I'm going to prove to you why this is true. This is the claim that we need to prove. First off, since we know that c is some positive number that's sandwiched in between 0 and infinity, what we could always do is we could choose two other positive numbers. Let's call them lowercase q and capital Q, such that we could sandwich c in between the two of them. For example, let's suppose that our c value is 4. I could choose a number smaller than 4, let's say 3, as well as a number larger than 4, let's say 5. And I could sandwich my c value 4 in between this smaller number and this bigger number. This is important because if you consider this limit right here, what it means is as n goes to infinity, the fraction an divided by bn approaches c. Because of that, what we could say is after a certain term, just like how c gets sandwiched in between lowercase q and capital Q, the fraction an divided by bn has to get sandwiched in between lowercase q and capital Q. I can now multiply this inequality by bn to get this result. The inequality we got at the end of the last slide is going to help us finish the proof. First, let's take a look at the part of the inequality that says an is strictly less than capital Q times bn. If we assume that the series bn converges, what that has to mean is the series capital Q times bn also converges. The reason being, capital Q is just a constant. Multiplying a series by a constant does not change its convergence or divergence. We know from the comparison test that if the greater of two series converges, then the smaller of the two series also has to converge. Now let's take a look at the other part of the inequality. The inequality also says that lowercase q times bn is strictly less than an. If we assume that the series bn diverges, what that has to mean is the series lowercase q times bn also has to diverge. Again, lowercase q is just a constant. Multiplying by a constant doesn't change a series convergence or divergence. We also know by the comparison test that if the smaller of two series diverges, then the greater of the two series also has to diverge. And now our proof is done. I have shown you why it is that when you use the limit comparison test, both the series have to converge or they both have to diverge. Now let's use the limit comparison test to figure out if this series, 1 divided by n raised to 4 minus a, is going to converge or diverge. First, you might notice that if this series was instead 1 divided by n raised to 4 plus 8, then we can use the comparison test, comparing it to 1 divided by n raised to 4, to conclude that it converges. What you have to be very careful about when you're trying to decide between the comparison test and the limit comparison test is noticing how the constants or other terms affect the series. In this series here, with the plus 8 in the denominator, we know numerically that as you increase a denominator, you decrease the fraction as a whole, which is why we could use the comparison test here. However, if you're taking away from the denominator, that makes the fraction as a whole greater. So we cannot use the direct comparison test here. 
the way I think about the limit comparison test is you use it whenever the direct comparison test almost works. The limit comparison test requires two sequences. The first thing that you have to do is set your given sequence equal to an, and then you need to construct a second sequence bn such that you could easily tell that bn converges or diverges. And the way you construct it is by creating what I like to call a simplified version of your given sequence. Usually what that looks like is taking away any constants or other terms that do not affect the end behavior of the sequence. In this case, the first thing that I did was I set an equal to my given sequence, and then I chose my bn to be 1 divided by n raised to 4. You saw on the other slide that we cannot use this bn with the direct comparison test, but what you're about to see is we can use it for the limit comparison test. So here's my limit as n goes to infinity of an divided by bn. This is equal to the two fractions divided by each other. But of course, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I get this. And notice, the degree in my numerator is the same as my degree in my denominator, which means the limit as n goes to infinity is just the fraction of the leading coefficients. And of course, 1 divided by 1 is just 1. And this is great because 1 is sandwiched in between 0 and infinity. And since we know by the p-series test that the series 1 divided by n raised to 4 converges, what that has to mean by the limit comparison test is that the series 1 divided by n raised to 4 minus 8 also has to converge. Let's look at a more difficult example. Before I do anything else, I set my given sequence equal to an. When constructing bn, I ask myself, which part of my given sequence has the biggest impact on its end behavior? Just like with any rational function, what impacts the end behavior is how the degree in the numerator compares to the degree in the denominator. Using this, I choose my bn to be n squared divided by n cubed, which of course simplifies to 1 over n. And that's very nice because I know that the series 1 divided by n diverges due to the p-series test. I set up my limit as n goes to infinity of the two fractions divided by each other. Again, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, so what ended up happening was this n distributed to any, everything in the numerator. The degrees in the numerator and denominator are the same, so the limit as n goes to infinity is just the ratio of the leading coefficients, in this case 1 divided by 3. And this is excellent because since my c value is a positive number, 1 divided by 3, it falls between 0 and infinity. And since I know that the series 1 divided by n diverges by the p-series test, then I could conclude using the limit comparison test that this series also has to diverge. To summarize this video, let's review what the limit comparison test says. It says, if you have two series, an and bn, such that all the terms in both an and bn are positive, you can then take the limit as n goes to infinity of an divided by bn, and if it happens to equal some positive number c, which falls between 0 and infinity, then both of the series either converge or they both diverge. Now, as for some strategies for using the limit comparison test, the way I think about it is you want to use the limit comparison test when the regular direct comparison test almost works, as you saw with example one. The bn that you construct should be a simplified version of your an that you could easily tell converges or diverges. When constructing your bn, you want to think about which terms in an have the biggest impact on its end behavior. And then finally, if your c value happens to be zero or infinity, you either need to consider using a different test or you need to try a different bn.